Bruce Jenner's gender transition is making headlines and people are paying closer attention to the process of changing one's gender. As our next guest will explain, the gender, gender transition process is a route many take in order to finally feel comfortable in their own skin. One of the most important parts of the transition process is the face. The specific term for the facial plastic surgery associated with gender transition is called facial feminization surgery. Dr. Jeffrey Spiegel is a world-renowned facial feminization plastic surgeon who works with patients from around the world. In this final step, and he now joins us this morning. Welcome to Urban Update. Thanks for coming in for really what is a just an, an, an amazing, fascinating topic here. From just to start on a very basic level, what exactly is facial feminization surgery and who has it done? Well, thanks for having me. You know, facial feminization surgery is a term we sometimes use for helping a person's face to match their gender. You know, a person who knows they're a woman, feels they're a woman, but doesn't look that way, the facial feminization surgery does that. It's important for a number of reasons. You can imagine how disquieting it would be if people were consistently misidentifying your gender. That's a very struggling thing, a very difficult thing to struggle with. And gender identity happens primarily through the facial features, as does many other aspects of recognition. So I've seen you on television, and I recognized you, though you were wearing different clothing today, and you know, might have a shorter hairstyle than another day, I still recognized you, and that's all comes through the face. Now, uh, trans uh, men, trans women, women, uh, men and women who uh, decide uh, that they, um, they want to change their outside to fit their inside, uh, they go, it's a long process, but the facial part of it is, uh, uh, it's one of the last parts of it, and it's one of the most important parts, is it not? I do think it's one of the most important parts. As I mentioned before, the real struggle for these individuals, in large part, is that they know who they are, but you can't see it. So we're able to give people that peace of knowing that they look to others the way they know they are. Now, I'm looking at this uh, we have on the screen here. Is this, is this uh, one of your patients? Yes, that's an example of one of the things, uh, one of the patients we've seen, and an example of some of the things we're able to do. On the, on the, um, let's see, on the left is the patient before, and the right is after? And if you notice, some of the changes that have gone on include we make the lips more full and shorter, we make the nose more tapered, we make the eyebrows the proper shape, and importantly, beauty in this case is not just skin deep because we need to adjust the actual bones of the head, the actual skull, in order to make the gender come through. I was going to say, I mean, you're actually changing the bone structure of going from a man to a woman, or I guess you could do the same going from a woman to a man. You can. When you are a woman transitioning to look like a man, hormones are very helpful, although there are some surgical procedures that we do. Uh, the other direction, men who know they're women and want to look like women, it's much more challenging and hormones really don't provide a dramatic improvement in one's appearance. I understand that Boston has become, uh, I guess, the hub for this uh, type of uh, facial feminization surgery. I guess, how did this happen? Well, sort of by accident. Um, a number of years ago, a trans woman came to see me and asked if I could help feminize her face. And I said, well, technically, yes, I do facial surgery and facial reconstruction. And uh, I said, but what would we do? So we talked about it. I thought about it. I checked the medical literature on it. There was very little published, almost nothing. So we discussed what I thought should be done. She said, let's do that. We did it, and she was happy. And she told someone, and she told someone, and she told someone. And, and now we see, uh, you know, hundreds a year. And uh, I was going to say, so you know, where, do you, where do you practice and how many patients do you have? Hundreds of year. Hundreds right. a year. I, I practice at Advanced Facial Aesthetics in Chestnut Hill, which is our uh, facial plastic surgery practice. And we do everything aesthetic. You know, we do Botox and fillers and lasers and all the things that you think of with plastic surgery. But the unique thing about our practice is that we really specialize in very difficult things. So people do come from around the world when they've had difficulty finding someone in their own community who can affect the changes they need. Do, um, when do people do this? Um, in, when in their lives do they do this? Is there generally a certain time when they're younger, middle-aged, older, or does it come at all different times? You know, that's an excellent question. And 
the time to do it is really when the person is ready. If you're speaking about feminization for a uh, transgender woman, the older a person gets, the more masculine they start to look. So when you're younger, you look more feminine, and when you're older, you look more masculine. That's because the facial features that we use to define male versus female become more accentuated with age. The eyebrows descend, so the arched eyebrows of a young woman go away, the lip gets longer, the jaw seems to get wider, the nose descends, we get flatter cheekbones as we get older. All these features that I need to think about to make sure a face looks attractive and feminine, they go away or change to a more masculine state with age. So the older you are, the more difficult it is. We have approaches to it, but we end up adding a lot of anti-aging or you know, youth enhancing procedures. Uh, what advice would you have for anyone considering uh, this type of surgery? And uh, also, do you ever, do, do, do people ever find anyone who's made a mistake or regretted it at all? The advice is uh, do your research. Like, I think it's like anything. Make sure that the person you're seeing has a lot of experience, knows what they're doing, and isn't sort of dabbling in this. Because while facial feminization is relevant to all aspects of facial surgery, and if you think about it, if you can take some of those male faces and make them into attractive women, it's much easier to take a woman's face and make her more attractive. But the mistakes that people make are rare. The, uh, it is important however, to um, do your research. In, in some ways, now you're obviously a surgeon, you're a plastic surgeon, a world-renowned plastic, plastic surgeon, but it seems to me you're something of an artist as well. Well, thanks. You know, I think you have to have a, a bit of a vision and a, appreciate beauty and try to enhance it. You know, beauty is so important in, in uh, our lives. There's a lot of positive things that go on, along with it, with how you feel about yourself and how others see you. And uh, it's not, we're not trying to make everyone look the same, just trying to help people to project their best self. A, a professor I had in college uh, once said that the two things everyone in life should strive for, beauty and truth. <laughs> Dr. Spiegel, uh, thanks Jeffrey Spiegel, thanks for coming in and uh, that was really an amazing, an amazing interview and um, you know, good luck with uh, helping all those folks. Well, thank you so much for having me. Okay, well, that's it for this edition of Urban Update. From all of us here at the show, I'm Byron Barnett. Have a great Sunday, everyone.